this is another day without a microphone sorry if you're curious about how you run a refrigerator off grid today I'm gonna do that and luckily it's not too breezy today so you can hear better and I'm about to put it in this shed right here this is just all this is is a refrigerator out of a RV it's a 2005 model which is a real upgrade for me so it has to have 12 volts of electricity. So I went back here, and I'm sure everybody's little grid is a little bit different, but if you move in really close right there, of course it's blurry because it's not focusing. But if you go in there, I've got this thing right here. This is just an old foam cord, and I'll show you the hookup for this later, but it's a, it's a car charger kind of a deal and i just split the wires and wired them up and i used a voltmeter to figure out which one's the negative and the positive meter my dog's about to break in the yard so we're gonna have to have a break so here's the other thing i was gonna show you all this is it's the same thing i've just got it taped up here so i can or wired up here so i can move it this is the same cord and everything as where it just hooks up to the gas like a gas grill I bought it at the hardware store you see the bare wire there that's obviously the one I did and I read in the manual that's how I did this where it says 12 VDC there that's the positive one and then down here at the bottom there this other bare wire is where I just split this wire right here so I split this wire and then so you got the the positive and then the negative to the right that's all you had to do I just wired it up with a pair of needle nose pliers let me go show you the solar system now okay so the solar we're gonna use I'm gonna stand on this bucket of course it'll be dangerous okay so the solar we're gonna use we're on the top of the shed right now the solar is right up there you can see that's my solar panels and they're wired to go inside this building I ran some wires you can see right up there at the corner I ran the wire off the solar panels and they're just all we have to have is 12 volts so this should work we're gonna go in kind of a dark area so hopefully it'll okay so you see where I got the wires coming in here and pay no attention to the blue thing that's just a charger for like other small stuff like phones and stuff but all we have to have is 12 volts and this is given off 14.5 which will be fine because this freezer has an automatic kind of a defroster type deal on it and I believe when it kicks on we're gonna need those 14 because I think if it drops below 12 we're gonna have a problem but I'm gonna set the refrigerator right here on these boards nothing fancy here but that's a car battery by the way value power from Walmart and I've been using this look at that it just dropped to 13.8 depends on clouds and stuff um, well there's 15 so just because you think you're getting 12 don't think you're doing good because sometimes if, if it's just doing 12 maxed out sometimes you're gonna be um, in trouble as soon as something kicks on that needs a little electricity but that's just a 45 watt solar kit from I think Harbor Freight and I've been using this to charge up phone batteries and stuff like that but this refrigerator job will be way better for it and way better for me okay everything should be hooked up good now you can see I got my propane line right there I'm going to try to move this back about like that so it's because the flame will be up in here right in there will be where it burns and I don't want that cord getting on it and that would be exciting which is another good thing about putting it in this shed it's way away from the house look at that drop down to 13.8 for a second there I know it doesn't really matter that much when you're just watching, but whenever you actually get your stuff going, if you did something like this, you would see it. it will occupy your brain. So here's the other 
The other little problem I've got is, is that this cord, I need to put it in a place where it's not coming really across all this other stuff because I don't like for wires to be tangled up. But other than that, it should get up and running good whenever I do it. So I'm going to fire it up here in just a second. I'm going to open this up just like this. Turn my valve on probably just a little. It don't need the whole thing on. That's what I'm thinking. All right, I just had to move it because I didn't like the way the setup was working. But either way, got that on a little bit. We're at 14.7. It's just varying a lot because of clouds today. So it's that's why it's always good to be in the 14s. Okay, now the owner's manual on this thing, which is always a good thing to read, says it's automatic. And when these two lights right here are on, that means the pilot lit. So I switch it to gas and it should start up on its own. Got that. I hear it clicking. So let's see if it continues. All right, it sounds like it's up and running. So we'll check back in a couple of hours. Once the clicking noises stop, that means it's burning. So we'll check back in a couple hours and either we'll either blow up our shed somehow or this refrigerator will be cold. All right, well, it was working last night. I didn't get to film it because it was dark, but it's about 10 in the morning now, we're back. As you can see, it's managed to pull itself down to 12.5 right now. And, you know, yesterday we were at 14, sometimes 15. So we'll see if it, any, if it finds its way back up or if it just drains it down to nothing. But it's spring and it's nice weather, so it'll be interesting to see if this thing runs during the, the fall season and all that. Let's open it up and see how the temperature is going. It's super cold in there. Needs a cleaning, but I figured I'll clean it if it works. Let's see about the ice box. Yeah, it's cold in there too. So, we're good for now.